This is a story of a game that I have mixed feelings about. Unlike Stuntman Ignition, I do not absolutely hate it, but unlike other games like Forza or GTA or Goldeneye, I don't absolutely love it. Let's talk about it. So this is, this game is Medal of Honor Airborne, specifically the Xbox 360 version for this one. So let's talk about the series in general first. So back in early to mid-2000s, EA Games, um, back before EA Sports became a humongous thing, I mean, I guess it kind of already was, but back when EA Games make a whole ton of money off their, at that time, new franchise called Battlefield. However, Battlefield had no single-player story mode, unlike the other new franchise at that time, Call of Duty. So... EA decided to, instead of making the obvious decision to put single player into Battlefield, offered the, the uh, duties of making a single player campaign to a smaller branch of the company and created a series called Medal of Honor. A series that would create a string of mediocre to good to pretty good games until its eventual collapse with Medal of Honor Warfighter um, in the early 2010s. That game was shit. Um, anyway, this game is called Medal of Honor Airborne, and it came out in 2007, a year after Call of Duty 3, back when World War II games were popular the first time around. Because they're getting more popular now, I guess that's why I decided to review this one. Also, it was an Xbox Live Gold title along with um, Battlefield 3 a while ago during EA Month um, in the beginning of the 2018 year. So yes, this is a mixed feelings review on Medal of Honor Airborne. Enjoy. Okay, so I'm going to apologize right now if you guys are any background noises. The last one was filmed at nighttime. This one's filmed in the house busy during the daytime. So yeah, anyway. Yeah, this is... Oh yeah, so here's the little cool thing. You get like a... Uh, Commendation for doing something. I died, so I had to get the commendation all over again. Also, here's an achievement for shoot to kill, which is move while using ADS. Any down sights? But I'll explain more about it a little bit. So I'm gonna talk about how the health works in this game. So you see, now I've got, I've got one and about three covered bar. Here's, I got three bars of health in this one. Um, so you take damage. If you lose a bar, like one of the bars, it's gone. You can generate up to the end of the bar that you currently have to get another bar of health. You can pick up a health pack. It makes the game interesting. It definitely separates from games like Call of Duty, but also makes it really annoying, especially when like some of the levels are just like onslaught of onslaught after of enemy after enemy. So it just becomes a bit tedious sometimes that health system. I mean, I like it, I enjoy it. It's kind of a nice mix between classic shooters in which you never generate any health, like Goldeneye, which you pick up body armor like Goldeneye 64, and the modern day games like Call of Duty and the modern day battle, where you do actually generate health. So yeah. Also, oh, here's the thing we should talk, probably talk about here. Sniping. In this game, it's actually fun. There's no st it does, it's a bit wobbly sometimes, but there's no steady breath button, which is awesome. I hate the steady breath buttons. I, always still, I, always, I still do. Uh, here's, oh, here's a really cool drop shot I did. Uh, this, this, I, this, most of these are only from a few levels, because these, level these levels do take several hours to complete. Um, <laughs> got him. Over the wall. So here we go. I'm going to use the Springfield sniper rifle, which I think is the only sniper rifle in this game. Not a whole ton of stuff. This game came out in 2007, so they're still kind of experimenting with the formula for this game series. Uh, which it, it, it stayed, this formula, and the game in general, stayed pretty good until the shitty reboot and then Warfighter, which killed the series. Oh yeah, there's one, this, that's with the M1 Garand rifle. Uh, actually, wait, is it? Or is it with the. No, I don't think it is. I think, I think it's with the K86. Anyway, M1 Garand rifle in this game. Glitch. You cannot reload the rifle. Normally it's press A to reload for some weird reason. I'm not talking about the controls as well. Um, for the M1 Garen rifle, you have to basically wait, wait, use up all the ammo and clip it will automatically reload. There's no way to reload it manually. I don't know why. Um, all glitch there. So yeah, the controls are a bit awkward. It's B to switch weapons and X to crouch. Then to lie down, you have to be using ADS, aim down sights with the left trigger, and a crouch. And then push, de pull down the left stick. You lie down. There's also, also, and while using ADS, you cannot really move around a lot. You can lean left and right. So you can hide behind a wall and lean out until you're shot, and then pull back again, which is really great when you're hiding from enemies and only have one bar of health left. Oh yeah, S uh, sniping is getting a lot of fun. So, yeah, the levels are huge. Call of Duty levels are very linear. Call of Duty levels tend to be very linear and stuff like that. Go this way. This level, you have to go all the way around the level to get some places you can kind of explore. It's really cool. And then the little mechanic that's really. I don't think it's ever appeared in any of the game is you can spawn anywhere. But when you die, uh, you, oh yeah, checkpoints. Make sure to hit the checkpoints. Oh yeah, pistol combination right there. Anyway, make sure to hit the checkpoints because when you die, the checkpoints in this game are very few and far between. When you die, you respawn after, uh, at that point in progress. However, normally you respawn in the sky in a parachute because, you know, you're airborne. 
and so you can parachute basically any part of the map you can reach. So if you want to, you can parachute right in the middle of an enemy encampment if you so choose. Don't don't really choose the option. It's normally a pretty fucking bad idea, but you can. And that was the whole part. That's one of the hardest things that, in the little interviews I have of the game uh, on the disc or I guess in my, in my, on the digital copy. Um, they talk about how difficult it is. So yeah, here's um. I'm, gonna shut, I'm actually just going to shut up during the cutscene here for a little bit, and I'll talk a little bit, but uh, some cutscene stuff here. Why is it that, like... Oh, yep. Yeah. Like, whenever you're in a plane... You're almost all of us starting on the plane, by the way. Whenever you're in a plane, in a World War II game, it always ends up getting shot. Why? Um, also, yeah, I, I don't have a lot of clips from my... I think last level of the game because it didn't work. Not that it didn't work, this is my Xbox One drive it was not working probably for a little while for some reason. I had too many clips, I did erase some of them, so. I think there's only like one, actually, I think there's only like one clip from the front level of the game, which is a big humongous search and destroy machine, which took me about four hours to complete. With lots and lots of deaths. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not horrible at first person shooting games as well, and this point, easy difficulty will still die a lot. I'm not horrible at first I'm actually pretty good at first person shooting games, especially the single player story. So, so here's, here's how you start the most levels of the game. Actually, all of them. You jump. So when you land, yeah, you're parachuting. You can get either get a botched landing, which you slam into something. It takes a while to get up. A flare, a failed landing, which takes you those little few seconds to get up. The best one you can get is a grease landing. Moving forward or backwards, I think while while landing, will get you something called a grease landing, which is a, you don't have to take any time to get up. So I, I've landed in front of enemies before. Oh, here's another clip of me doing the same thing. Um, oh yeah, I died. This one, this one's, you know, I didn't jump out of plane, it's me spawning in the air. And that is a grease landing. They land perfectly. Ow. Okay, that. Good. Um, now one thing we'll talk about in this game is there's a shotgun that has no business being a shotgun, it's more business being a mid to long range firearm, because I have sniped people with it across an entire, like, across what, what this, what the, what the, what the rifle could reach. Doink. And shot. Now this level is, I think it's called, I think it's a level of the Oh, here's a shotgun. Boom. Love it. I don't really like shotguns in this game, but this game made me love this shotgun so much. This shotgun's brilliant. I mean, this level this over here is called Neptune, and it is a bitch. You can take, you can take towers, take hills for that, but plus four, oops, shotgun. I love the combination right there. But seriously though, it's a bitch. This, this one took me at least six hours to complete. Not all at once, like over the course of a few days, I didn't play anything else. Like, I stopped playing Forza to finish this game. Um, I was like, I've actually had this, I've actually downloaded it and then uninstalled and downloaded this game a few more times since I first, since I first got. Oh yeah, there's a health pack I got back there. Uh, oh yeah, melee is the right stick. If you actually if you like if you have a bayonet combination uh, combination commendation for your shotgun, you actually unlock a bayonet. Which when you oh yeah, this is never a good idea. Do not parachute onto an enemy like that. This is what you do not do in this game, and this is how I died. <laughs> Stupid. Um. Yeah, but you, you, if you get a combination for a bayonet for your shotgun, you can, do, um, you can use that. It'll be a much better melee weapon. And see, this is a hill I had to press up. Like, I get so far, and then I make one mistake, and then enemies in this game are very green and happy, especially on this level. I get blown up by a grenade and die. I have to go all the way back to the beginning again. Um, uh, it's very similar to Call of Duty 3 in a lot of ways. The landscapes, the graphics are pretty similar. Well, they mark all the checkpoints of stars or whatever. Uh, here's, here's the same, this is still, this is still in level Neptune, by the way. So, so is the tower. Right? Here's, here's the thing about a tank on Neptune. You have to collect all the pieces of the tank and avoid getting shot by it. So I'll use it for the tank gun. More shotgun fun. Shotgun is fun in this game. Um, yeah. Like, rocket, taking a, taking a rocket to the face will take out, I think, a tank. Well, not like a tank rocket, I'll use it too. But a rocket, like a, those RPGs, bazooka rockets, will take out half your health. Oh yeah, someone look at this map, and then, oh look, someone's coming through the door, oh shit. Uh, this is also stolen Neptune, by the way. And then so I'm just gonna go around the back here, and then, uh, oh yeah, there's a window over here. <laughs> Something like that's pretty fun. Um, yeah, I'll stolen Neptune. I'll, I'll let you guys know when you change levels, actually. Another shocking combination. I got those pretty quickly. Um, now, there's like a little, uh, I, I think it's like either blue or purple inside of each one. Oh, as you can see, my shotgun actually just has a bayonet inside of it now. It's, it's clip. See, it's kind of filled up with these, like, it's, it's like blue or purple stuff. When, get, when I get to the top, you get a new combination level. So this is, um, K6, this is for sniping. This is still Neptune. Actually, wait, no, is it? No. Wait. Yes. And Neptune. So you get the day in, it's to get the achievement day in reverse, I think it is. Anyway, it's 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 just before the invasion of Normandy. Uh, D-Day. 
type thing. Which they don't look over that much, but it's kind of a cool thing to tackle the whole airborne unit type thing. Anyway, this is the as you get, you get the achievement for the end of the level. Day in reverse. There you go. I like the fact that the on the face <laughs> so stuck in the spikes. But yeah, so this is one of the final clips of the game I have here. This is, this is the this is one this is on one of the later levels. This is on the fun, this is on we know it never mind, it's not. I thought it was. This level's a bitch because there's a tank that if this took me forever. Um, because there's a tank, you have to get rid of me. I, I die a lot in these levels because there's no great place to land here. Everywhere you land in this level is vulnerable. And so, yes, yeah, you can snipe with basically anything in this game. I'm sniping here with one of the with a rifle. These are tank grenades. These will also blow up Nazi elite soldiers because they otherwise they'll just kill you. This is the tank you have to destroy. I know these grenades actually did this for a long time. I spent about about maybe an hour trying to find like rockets and just kept dying. Um. You basically have to run around from house to house, avoiding the tank and taking all the enemies. This is on a bridge later on that level. And this is a long level, by the way. This is a long level. Oh yeah, boom. Here's probably the coolest sniping thing of all time. Got him. <laughs> I cannot believe that. Yeah. And that bridge is also a bitch to defeat. Um, oh yeah, here's me using here's me using an RPG on a tank. Okay, actually, I don't think should be using an RPG. I think yeah, that's one of the that's one of their tanks. They will just they will absolutely destroy it. And this is one of the final clips of the level. There's just a second to last clip of this little video thing here. Um, this is the final level. It's a human search and destroy mission. And one more clip will be about the multiplayer. Yeah, the multiplayer, right? Well, no one plays it anymore. Either that or it's offline. Because if you actually launch the leaderboard, it will crash the game. I've tried it like four times and probably my Xbox at serious risk doing it. Uh, yeah, the multiplayer from what I remember the last time I played actually, uh, about half a year ago, was pretty basic. It was tiny. The maps were super tiny. Like, imagine like old Call of Duty maps divided in half and maybe a little bit less than that. So anyway, that's that. Now on to the final wrap-up portion of the video. And so yeah, that was Medal of Honor Airborne. Is it a good game? Yes. Is it a great game? Definitely not. Does it have problems? Absolutely. Are the levels annoying? Yes. You die a lot, and they're annoying as fuck, but it's a fun game. Uh, I recommend you get it. Yeah, it's pretty cheap. I think it's about 8 bucks in the Xbox store right now. It's pretty good. Um, it's only worth the 8 bucks, I guess. Uh, would I pay more than $20 for it? No. Is it a fun game? I said, yeah. Um, I saw I have some of the clips in the video back there that are a bit soft, but uh, like the volume is a bit soft. But as I said, I'm still going to use this kind of new format I'm trying out with a more, um, I wouldn't say professional, but definitely a, a much more game-involved look at the games that I've been doing before. So hopefully that works. Thank you guys for watching.